Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to all my new followers. This week we're going to discuss six tips that I believe will help you get better results with film photography. Um, these are <laughs> mistakes that I definitely made in the beginning a long time ago. And the great thing about the online community on YouTube, on the internet, is that we can learn from each other's mistakes and therefore not do them again. So, um, yeah, definitely the first tip I would say is um, never ship your film during the summer. Of course, this is highly relative to where you live in the world. If you live in cooler temperatures, you don't have to really worry about that. But here in Texas, it gets triple digits. And the last thing you want is your film to sit in, you know, a um, very warm vehicle for half an afternoon or however long. It could be even up to two days. And then your film absolutely gets ruined. And thedarkroom.com did a wonderful little test to show you that it absolutely does affect your film and therefore you will get different results you might even think like oh hey that film sucks because i shipped it in the summer and i've you know i've have no baseline or anything else to compare it to and um it, you know you're going crazy thinking about what is this? is it the scanner is it the development is it this it could be just the heat that got to it. So that would be my number one tip. Um, definitely do not ship your film during hot days. I personally go get it in the store locally to kind of um, support the local stores. Or when I do have to ship it, I ship it in the cooler months of the year to where I don't have to worry about that problem essentially. Now, the second tip, tip number two, um, kind of leads into the first tip, is that you want to get to know your film at box speed. I know that online there is um, a trend to want to, you know, rate your film lower to overexpose it a stop and then get these, you know, sometimes washed out colors or pastel tints which is great, there's nothing wrong with that if you want that look. That's absolutely wonderful. But to really get to know a film, to get to know its characteristics, it's best to do that at box speed. There are already so many variables involved. The lens that you're using, the meter that you're using, the scanner that you're using, the um, lab that you're bringing it to, if you're bringing it to a lab, which we'll discuss in a minute, but learn a film at box speed and then from there you have a baseline from where you can work from and so baseline in photography because photography is essentially chemistry is um, always a wonderful thing to have so learn your film at box speed there's nothing wrong with that from there you can over or under expose or get the look that you want based on that baseline so um, yeah talking about scanning you can get so many different results with different scanners. Personally, I use an Epson V550, which for 35 millimeter is not the sharpest scanner, but what it does do, it renders the colors really, really nice. And with nice, I mean it renders them true to the film. And you can tweak it a little bit here and there, but it really, right out of the box, renders the colors really well. So the Epson V50 gives you a wonderful baseline. Of course, um, which I'm personally going to get into. Nowadays, people do a lot of DSLR scanning. I'm going to get into that in the future. And um, if you look at Hashem McAdam from Pushing Film, he's an abs absolute master in that aspect. I mean, he has a couple of cool videos there, which I definitely recommend that you watch. So that would be my, you know, the tip number two is learn your film at box speed. And of course, try as many different films as you can because thankfully we're still, you know, lucky enough that there are still a lot of emulsions around and you never really know until you've tried one whether or not you're going to like it. Don't base it on what you see online. Try it out yourself. Uh, 
Now, tip number three is definitely read the manual of your camera. I know it's not the most exciting activity to do, and um, it could get quite boring, And um, but read it. For instance, when I read the manual of my Nikon N2000 F301, I learned, and that's after being in it for over 20 years, which is shameful actually, I learned that you can use AI lenses, not, you know, Nikkor AI lenses in intermediate settings. So they have full stop clicks, but you can also use them intermediate for more precise exposure. I never knew that. So, um, you know, there could be little gems in there that you've never heard of. I would definitely recommend to read that manual. It's valuable. It's always good to learn your tool. A camera is a tool and you want that tool to absolutely get out of your way so you can become more creatively liberated. So, that you, you, you know, you're not fiddling with what button is that? How does it go? How does this go? You know, read that manual. There's wonderful information on there. There's also a guy online, if you can't, you know, if you don't have a physical magic, um, manual, there's a guy, um, something Butkus. I'll uh, put the link down in the description, but he has just about every manual of every camera that you can find. So very good. And then um, that was number tip number three. Definitely read your manual. Very important. Now, tip number four is um, definitely learn your camera's meter. Again, online, it's very popular to learn an external meter. There is nothing wrong with that. But these camera manufacturers, they spent millions. They spent, I don't know how much time on trying to get a really, really accurate meter. Why not learn that meter? There's nothing wrong with an internal meter of a camera. An external meter is really just an internal meter, but then externally. And so, um, of course, um, sometimes you're going to need a spot meter. And old manual focus cameras, they're not going to have a spot meter. But it's still very important that you learn the internal meter of your camera, how it behaves under cer certain circumstances. Nikon, I've always been a Nikon guy, I can't really speak for other brands, um, but Nikon has wonderful meters. If you look at an F100 and its matrix meter is flawless. I've never had it um, disappoint me under any sort of circumstances. So learn that meter, learn what it does under backlit conditions, learn what it does under high contrast situations. Is it going to overexpose? Do you need to underexpose? All that kind of stuff. Very important. Learn your camera's meter. It's going to help you get much better results, whether it is a center weighted. You know, spot metering is a little different because you're going to be very specific anyway when you're spot metering. <laughs> Guys, tip number five is um, a tip that you've um, uh, heard hear about a lot online and that is try to find the best lab that you can to do, get your film developed at which in essence you know in and of itself it's not bad advice but when you choose to go that route you want to get acquainted with the person who actually develops your film otherwise there is this barrier of anonymity in between the person who develops the film and you and essentially there's the probability it's plausible that you just become a number and i've had all kinds of results i've had scratches on film i've had film that wasn't developed properly um, and it's incredibly frustrating when you put your heart and soul into a film or into a shot i mean and into a role and you've really went at it and you're excited and somebody puts a bunch of scratches on there now i've argued with the guy um, at a lab because my film had this, you know, horizontal line across the whole length of the film and he tried to um, tell me that this was due to maybe some sand in my camera or whatever nonsense reason. Turns out they use film squeegees and I was fairly new at it then 
and uh, a film squeegee will absolutely create a line along the length. And um, so ever since I've started developing my own black and white film, I've gotten these really beautifully clean um, negatives, no scratches, no dust, very little post-processing of getting rid of dust. And um, so get acquainted with the person who develops your film if you're using a lab, but preferably just develop yourself. Definitely every now and then do bring in, in a role um, to your lab to kind of support your personal labs. And not every lab is going to be um, bad at that, but there's definitely some labs that uh, you want to stay away from. But get acquainted with the guy or the gal who's um, developing your film and um, just because your name isn't Ansel Adams doesn't mean that um, you sh your film shouldn't be handled with care. Your money is just, uh, you know, worth the same as anybody else's. So um, get acquainted. And then, yeah, tip number six um, has everything to do with technique. So when I was new and um, I got my first manual focused camera, I would, um, you know, of course, hold the camera to the face, you know, focus, recompose, and then take the photo. But what happens is that cameras have a, you know, the shutter button has a shutter throw. So as you push it down, you know, it will um, push down um, or it will shake your camera a little bit. And um, as you're, if you're doing that while holding the um, um, focusing button, then you know at the last moment you can definitely um, throw your focus out. So um, you know, focus on the subject, take your fingers off the focusing ring, and then take the photo. And you'll see that you'll keep have a lot more keepers in terms of sharpness. So that's definitely what I would advise in terms of technique. Now, guys, I always say when it comes to advice, you know, chew the meat, spit out the bones. So these are just some um, mistakes that I used to make or these are lessons that I've learned. I hope they will help you. If it just helps one person, then I'm already very happy. And um, that was it for this week, guys. Um, love you guys and see you in the next video.